I'm Sadakat. I'm one of the PGY3 emergency medicine residents here at Bellevue Emergency Medicine. I'm Chris. I'm also one of the PGY3s. Today we're going to be talking about the primary trauma survey or the ABCD of trauma. When you're performing the primary survey, it's important to be systematic in your approach so that you don't forget any steps. Today, Sadakat and I are going to talk about the ABCDEs in sequence, but in reality, a lot of these things are happening in parallel. So um, let's just start with a clinical case because that's how all of medicine starts. Let's say we have a 30-year-old man who was a bicyclist, hit by a truck, fell off of his bike, hit his head, maybe passed out. We don't have much details. EMS gives us a two-minute pre-notification before they get here. What are we going to do, Chris? Before they get here, if you have the opportunity to, we're going to assign roles. Traumas are very hectic. There's usually a lot of people in the room. You have no idea who some of them even are. So we want to try to mitigate that chaos and one of the best ways is to assign roles. In the Bellevue trauma slot for us, the person running the trauma is usually standing at the foot of the bed. The person managing the airways at the head of the bed. Nursing is usually on this side, establishing access and putting the patient on the monitor. And a resident is usually on that side performing the primary and secondary surveys. Here we're very lucky at Bellevue. We've got a great setup with our monitors, our airway equipment, and our medicines all behind us. So let's say the patient rolls in on a gurney. First things first, we wanna make sure that they have a C collar because this is a blunt trauma. We wanna make sure we protect the C spine, um, especially as we move the patient over from EMS gurney into our stretcher. Once they're in our stretcher, we want to establish two points of IV access, two large pore IVs. We want to get them on the monitor, and then we can start our primary survey. So the first part Part of the primary survey is airway and in airway you just talk to the patient if they are speaking to you having full conversations they most likely have a patent airway but you definitely want to make sure you assess for any signs of facial injury or any uh, signs of neck injury because an expanding neck hematoma or significant facial injury could mean that they have a compromised airway if they're gurgling sonorous could mean that they have a compromised airway and if they do you want to make sure that you secure the airway before you move on to the next step, breathing. When you're assessing the breathing of the patient, you're looking for chest rise, you want to make sure it's symmetric, you're listening to the lungs. Important to remember that the presence of breath sounds should not reassure you against something like a pneumothorax, because you can still have breath sounds in that case. Check the oxygenation of the patient, make sure that their O2 sat is good. If there's any evidence for penetrating chest wall injury, now's the time that you're going to want to identify that, so make sure you're actually looking at the chest. And if you have any concern for something like a pneumothorax, hemo-pneumothorax, you may choose to go ahead and bring over your ultrasound now to check for lung sliding because you may need to place a chest tube. Circulation has got a lot of moving parts to it and essentially what you're doing in circulation is assessing the hemodynamic status. First thing that you want to do is get a good manual blood pressure along with a heart rate. You'll be able to calculate the shock index from this. You want to make sure that the patient is perfusing to all four extremities. So you want to get good pulses on all four extremities. If they have a very significant injury or distracting injury and you're concerned about arterial bleeding, you may want to apply a tourniquet at this time. If EMS places a tourniquet, you may want to take it down in order to assess for any sort of arterial injury at this time. If they have an arterial injury, they need they need immediate intervention or OR. You also want to check pelvis because patients can hemorrhage into the pelvis with any sort of pelvic injury. You want to check for diastasis and apply a pelvic binder if you feel an unstable pelvis. Um, we already got two points of access and you may want to activate blood if the patient has signs of hemorrhagic shock. If they have very significant signs of shock, and you may even want to activate a uh, massive transfusion protocol at your institution. After circulation, the next step is disability. This is your gross neurologic assessment. Here's where you're calculating the GCS. You're asking yourself the questions, is this patient protecting their airway? Is there any evidence of spinal cord injury? And is there any evidence of herniation or impending herniation? So if the GCS is less than eight, they'll say intubate. That's really asking the question, is the patient too somnolent? Are they intoxicated? Is there any reason other than the airway and breathing why you may choose to take their airway at this step? In terms of spinal cord injury, is the patient moving all of their extremities? 
Is there any evidence that might suggest the patient actually had a stroke? Maybe that's why they got in the car accident or whatever trauma uh, they have is maybe they had a stroke. And then assessing their pupils to look for unequal pupils. If there is evidence of herniation, then at this point you may choose to give something like mannitol or hypertonic saline. And the last part is exposure. And typically this is happening in conjunction with the rest of the primary survey, but you wanna expose every part of the patient's body because it's very easy to miss traumatic injuries if you don't look for it. So specific places that you wanna make sure that you look are the axilla, the groin, and the back. And you wanna maintain C-spine stabilization if you're turning the patient. And at this point, you can also uh, assess for any sort of bleeding wounds that may need immediate intervention. Sometimes you can have light threatening hemorrhagic shock from scalp wounds. So you may want to intervene with a figure of eight stitch if you see a very significant uh, arterial scalp wound. After the primary survey and before you start your secondary survey, you may choose to do some adjuncts. For us, that means chest x-ray, usually a pelvis x-ray as well, and then your EFAST exam. Uh, important to remember that if the patient's hypotensive and you have a positive EFAS exam, then you may need to proceed to get the patient to the operating room as opposed to a CT scanner uh, if you have access to an OR. So those are the A, B, C, D, E's of trauma. A for airway, E for breathing, C for circulation, B for disability, and E for exposure with adjuncts at the end. When you're assessing uh, these different parts of the primary trauma survey, in airway, you want to talk to the patient, assess for facial and neck injuries to make sure they have a patent airway, and breathe Breathing. You want to look for chest rise, you want to check for breath sound, and you want to use your EFAS if you're concerned about a hemoneumothorax. For circulation, you want to check all four extremities, get a good blood pressure, and check the pelvis to see if you need to apply a pelvic binder or activate blood. For disability, you want to check the GCS of the patient. You want to make sure that you're maintaining spinal precautions and see if they need to either be intubated or if they need mannitol or hypertonic saline. For exposure, you want to identify any sort of traumatic injuries on their body, um, and you may need to intervene on them immediately. And for adjuncts, you want to get a chest x-ray, pelvic x-ray, and do an EFAS in order to determine if the patient needs to immediately go to the operating room. With every trauma, it's important to treat it like it is a level one trauma, like the patient is very sick. That way you're prepared if they were to decompensate. I'm Sadakat. This is Chris. This was the primary trauma survey here at NYU Bellevue. Yeah.